Hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Say Not Akana with me, Phantom Zawai. When we last left off, we were still in the middle of saving Izumo from the forces assaulting it. A bunch of the golems from the southern gods. I think we're done leveling for now. We're just kind of making our way towards the shrine where Narukana originally was staying before we met her. It's been over a week since I last played again, so I'm like, I hope that's what happened last time. I'm pretty sure. I know we're in Izumo trying to rescue them, but I don't think anything else happened in the in-between... Well, in-between the map, the beginning and middle, and end that we are about to reach. Just kind of having everyone slowly move up. Alright, uh, you go ahead and stand by, actually, Team 4. I'm gonna let Narukana handle this team, actually. Everyone else can move in to back her up in case we get a boss spawn or something like that, but... I don't think we're really gonna have to worry. I'm pretty sure that we just beat Team 20 and, uh, we're gonna be done with the mission. But we'll see. You never know. Occasionally, the game does like to throw a curveball at you. Just not all that often. Uh, again, there's really no reason that we just don't use our uh, our usual Excalibur 2 fireball combo here and absolutely destroy them. So let's do that. I'm a fan. There goes my hero. And goodbye. All right. Go team. Another eternal relic. Uh, we have Aura Photon Barrier 1, wow! Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to turn that down, but let's see what else we've got. Heaven Javelin 2. I'll be honest, that seems worse than Heaven Javelin 1. Oh, all enemies. Okay, I see what you're playing at here, game. Uh, but that is not really something that I'm worried about at the moment. Harvest 2. Ooh, that is really nice. Cycle of Water. That's really strong. But Glacial Jolt 2 is still going to generally make more sense. Blade of Blood Bloodletting 2 for Katima. Also nice and strong. Unfortunately, we're only going to be able to choose one of these, even though there are so many nice options. Chilling Upper 2. Good lord. Thalia is getting an upgrade. Bloodlust 1. Damage up for the ally attacker. Nice, that's a good one. Lightning Blast 2. Some force damage on that. Jutsita Lightning Fire 1. That's another nice attack. Nameless Blade 1. Wow, 40% force damage, huh? Oh, it takes six mana. I was thinking, like, wow, that seems crazy, but now it makes sense. All right, and Narukana, Elemental Burst, all enemies. Wow, that is also quite good, but Narukana is already so powerful, I don't really feel like I need to prioritize. Like, hit alls are usually more of a convenience thing, is, is the way I feel about them. Generally, if you're going to be able to take down a group of enemies with a hit-all spell, you could just focus them down and just take a little longer. Uh, so I'd rather focus on an ability like Nozomu's defend, uh, defense, his aura photon barrier, that will just make him much better. Uh, what is this? All combat mana is reduced to zero, I can't talk. Self all attributes up and anti-banish. Interesting. So that affects enemies and allies, is what I'm reading from this. I lost my memories, but I've started remembering recently. Someone really important gave me an order, and my first job was to come here. But my parents said I was still a kid and couldn't use the full power of my Eternity Sword. I have to keep working hard. And yet, you're this powerful. Alright, so we are going to go with Aura Photon Barrier 1, just because I do really like using Nozomu as a defender. Um, so it just seems to make sense to give him 
you know, this ability to also can defend, you know, everyone. So that'll give us some versatility in defending against spells with Nozomu as well, which I really like. Okay, so let's continue forward. We should just take this base here and then hopefully move on to some more story stuff. It does seem like we've been in this area for a good long time. Though again, you know, it's been like a week since I played, but feels like we've been here a long time. Take the base, and her shrine has been captured, and victory is ours. There, Evolia, no, Isbel. We break through the mana golems and arrive at their leader. Standing before us is an enemy that we faced many times before. Evolia, the Lightbringer. But now, Isbel is in control of her body. ここまで来ましたか。やはりあなたたちの力、侮れませんね。余裕を見せていられるのも今のうちだよ。あなたの好きにはさせない。やはりどこまでも我々に対立するのですね。まあ手を取り合うつもりもありませんが、この世界を
no way to know before we actually fight her, I guess. So I should stop hum hawing around and just do it. Okay, so for the first turn, actually, I think we're going to reverse them just so we can inspire. And go from there. Maybe even inspire and have Nautakana do the first attack because Excalibur 2 is just so strong. So let's go out. Guns a-blazing is my thinking here. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay, so she has got... Oh, right, don't these defend against certain uh, or, um, elements? I think that's actually her gimmick. Yeah, white, red, and green. Blue, green, and black. Reverse damage. Okay, um... Man, that sucks. Um, that means I need to put on... Okay, we got a blue and white attacks, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, Nozomu is white, of course. Uh, you are using a blue attack, and you're using a blue attack. So Nozomu will be our white attacker. Uh, she's probably going to actually start with Protection Soul. And I wonder if... I don't remember if it's like Burblezerd, where according to the element you actually attack her with, if she switches or not. But for this turn, we are going to absolutely want to attack her with a blue attack, so that actually works out. I am going to need Nozomu to actually be, you know, an attacker, so I'm actually glad I did switch him to Jewel Edge 2. It's just a shame that his attack is so weak compared to the other, the other two from a, you know, pure material numbers perspective. Alright, let's do it. I probably should have looked over her, you know, support skills again, but I kind of just want to do it. <laughs> oh my god. That was ridiculous. I don't think I need to, really. Yeah, we're okay. Light burst 2. Okay, so that still hit everyone. So is that not something that you can actually, um, you know, defend against? Hmm. Okay, regardless. And she's probably going to use Protection Luna here, yeah. So, and that's going to nullify blue. So actually, we need to do this in that case. Um, this way, at least we are healing a little bit with Natakana. I should look at her other attacks. The thing is, we only have to hit her a few times to beat her at this rate. Aura Rain 2 is going to be nasty. Okay. Yeah. Alright, let's do this. 2,000 more damage? Wow! Okay, so... That heals everybody up in good shape. Aura Rain 2. That's gonna hurt a lot. Not as bad as I thought, though. Um... She's gonna use Protection Soul again, right? And that's white damage, sure enough. So... I might actually want to just do it this way. Take the small heal from Nozomu, leave Euphoria in the defender role. She might use her 700, man. That would defend most of the damage, though. She's probably not going to be that dumb. Then again, I guess the AI in this game. You know, it seems to be more pattern-based than it does reactive. And, well, I shouldn't say that, because it does react to what you do sometimes, but... Uh, that does seem to kind of be the ex exception, at least in my mind. Yeah, let's do this. I want to do as much damage to her as possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah, now we just have to finish her off. Nice cluster two. Down, 
okay. She's using Star Veil. Okay, that is her reverse damage. Um, I feel like I want to hit her real hard through that. But I also want to heal up in case it doesn't work. So I'm going to do it like this. Yeah. We do have enough mana to do everything we need to do here, too, so should be fine. Not quite enough, okay. Her reverse damage is going to be annoying with that defense, but, you know, Narukana is a great healer, so I feel like we're going to kind of be able to hang in there as long as we need to, which is good for us. She's using Star Veil again, so I think we Excalibur, too. Let's leave Nozomu in the defender role here. Just because he's going to be able to defend more effectively than Euphoria, actually. So, actually, the heal... I feel like Narukana's going to be able to heal up another round worth of damage if we switch her. So, let's try to hit her real, real hard. Yeah, they did it. Victory! This squad is not OP or anything. しかし、気は熟した。すでに力の回収も多かった官僚している。抗えの滅びを前にして、あなたたちは絶望に心を染めるのです。実に愉快。何言ってやがる。お前らは負けたんだ。王女際が悪いことだ。ふふふ。<
迷惑かけてごめんなさいねそれじゃさよなら We nod farewell as her body disappears into sparkling lights. The trail of glittering mana floats up into the heavens. I stand there watching it for a long time. With twisted ideals, but. Everyone feels the same as we watch Evolia disappear. We were lucky that we didn't understand who she really was. Or were we lucky until we didn't understand who she really was until the last moment? Or was this a cruel twist of fate? I think in silence for a while. And then. The world suddenly heaves like something struck it. The shockwaves go through me, no, into me, and keep getting bigger and bigger. I felt this way before, back in our world when all this started. <laughs> Euphoria points at a rip in the air. There's nothing there, just torn space. The crack spreads and grows bigger, like something inside is tearing its way out. More of those tears appear all around us. And then, huge things begin to appear through them. Everyone stiffens when she yells that. It's not just a couple of them. Dozens, maybe hundreds of those rips open out of the huge cre uh Wait, those rips open up and those huge creatures pour out? Sure, an entire army of antibodies. Just when they appeared in the Sephiroth, just like when they appeared in the Sephiroth, they've completely focused on one thing. There's nothing besides clear hostility aimed at us. They make a dull whirring as they begin to move. We can't avoid fighting them now. Their dead eyes show clearly Quite clearly, they want to execute their instructions no matter what. One of the first ones that appeared approaches us. It digs into the ground and opens its mouth. There's a huge muzzle inside of it. Light begins to gather in it, and... <laughs> Nozomi and Salas quickly put up a barrier, and the antibody ignores it and fires a blinding light. A raging torrent beats against the barrier. It holds, but only barely. And both Salez and Nozomi are gasping for breath. <laughs> With a low roar, all of them start to move at the same time. Their army surges like a tsunami towards us. The rumbling of their movements almost sounds like Isbel laughing. They clash with the enemy's front line. They attack fiercely with all their strength and uh, the strength of their eternity souls. But the futility is obvious. They can't even stop the antibodies from advancing. Everyone is forced to retreat little by little. No matter how hard we fight, or how few of them approach us at a time, they're too strong and there's too many of them. We're going to be slaughtered. People are starting to get hurt too. How long till our strength runs out, and we're forced to lay down and die? Minutes? Seconds? Even if we manage to hold out, the results are clear. We're overpowered and outnumbered. Even when we do knock one down, it's immediately trampled by two more that then take its place. All we can do is keep falling back, but we're almost out of room to run. <laughs> 
し止めろでもその後どうするのよこの数を倒せるような手段なんてこっちにはないわ一体ずつ破壊してったってどうにもならないどうすれば Their words clearly ring in my ears. We're going to lose. We don't have any way to resist their overwhelming numbers. We're just going to be mindlessly trampled. We don't have the power to fight back. So we just need more power. I think we all know where this is going. I sheathe my swords and hold my empty hand against my chest. I plead in my heart. The thing sleeping inside of me. No, just freeing it won't be enough. Isn't this what you always wanted? To have my body? I know that, but I need to. I'm not strong enough. I need to be stronger to end this fight. We don't have that kind of power, but he does. The overwhelming power of destruction. No, I can't just keep clinging to that hope forever. I've just been running away from the enemy right in front of me, from my destiny. And this isn't giving up. I feel calm now. Almost at complete peace. Raimi gapes at me in surprise. My chest throbs. That thing's answering my call. It starts to break through the shell of my body. I want this power. I want to use this power. I have to use this power. And I just should. The cage holding him inside of me shatters. Uh, uh! The memories of my past burst into me. Along with limitless power. I can't even control all of, all of this power. It pours out of me. And with it, a searing ache through every inch of me past anything I've ever felt before. But it doesn't hurt. My senses feel like they've awakened something entirely new. This is me. This is who I truly am. This is what I truly am. And I have power. So much power. Power that nothing can match. All the sounds around me fade away. I can't hear anything but my own heartbeat. Yes. There's only two truths. Everything will be destroyed. And I will be the one to destroy it all. Those are the laws that rule this world. These are people, or there are people shouting around me. But I can hear only one voice shouting in my mind. Nozomu. I scream desperately that my name is Setoki, Setoki Nozomu. He still uh, got a control over himself to a degree. I try to engrave that into my heart, into the memories that are surging through me, and I change. I am me. I embody a single auriculum name. I am the god who stands above all. All in the world kneel before me, whether in terror or in worship, before this absolute power. Everything that stands in my way shares the same fate, writhing in despair, slaughtered while cursing their fate, dying, cursing their helplessness. I will carve my name into the hearts of all who dwell in this world forever.
There we go. <laughs> then we just go back to the battle map. しかし、エボリオスラム犠牲者なのかもしれぬな。何かのために何かを差し出して戦う未来を選び続けるしかないのだろうな。我は望むの心のままに行こう。その未来がどんなものだとしてもな。Unsurprisingly, Narukana is the MVP. Got another 36,000 mana. And Nozomu is awakened to a new Riklam name. Or Nozomi, rather. Reinforcers leveled up. Naya's Summoner. Sorluska Summoner. Jacita Summoner. Zetsu's Reinforcer. That's that. Chapter 11. Memories from Before Time. All right. You know what? Let's keep going a little longer. <laughs> I want to see a little more. Where am I? Darkness spreading out endlessly in front of me. Utter stillness. I can't see anything, no matter where I look. I can't hear anything, no matter how hard I try. What am I doing here? Am I standing? Am I asleep? Are my eyes closed? Are they open? There's only a sickening feeling on my skin. Like cold mud, sapping my warmth, stealing it from me. But there's something more terrifying than just that. It's getting harder to think. I'm breaking apart. I'm starting to lose sense of who I am. What I am. Don't know anymore. What was I just doing? Why am I here? What am I? What? A voice from far away. A regal voice. Speaking to me and not waiting for an answer. お前の力はあまたの欠片となり、この時間中に生きる神々に等しく与えられるのだ。この犠牲は無駄とはならない。私は世界が安寧に満たされている間、眠りにつく。お前もセフィリカと共にこの世界の行く末を見守るがいい。
Her voice is resonant with sorrow. She leaves, but reluctantly. I don't know if what she wished for came true, but something remains in my memories. She never came back. Long solitude. Not even a trace of warmth. Slowly but surely, my body inches closer to death. Another voice. Not Akana. Innocent. Not like the other girl. She looks at me in confusion, but I can't answer her. I don't have the strength left to move, or even to think. I'm disappearing. In the years, centuries, eons. My mind is faded into this empty space. But I can hear her voice clearly. She puts her hands together like she's praying. And when she touches me, I can feel the warmth of another's skin, a long forget forgotten memory. And I slowly look up. An understandable question, but I can't answer her. The answer is already lost somewhere in the darkness. She takes it all in so naturally, not letting it bother her at all. She continues in the exact same tone. Didn't we see this scene at the very beginning of the game? I think. I don't know what this outside world she's talking about is. She takes my hand like she's leading me. I hold my hands up before her. For some reason, my body seems to know what to do. The power I want. The power to break all laws. If she's offering it to me, then I'll take it. The moment that thought takes form in my mind, I realize that my hands are holding something. Two shining swords. So Narukana gave Jirol Aurora? But, okay, so this is just supposition from what we saw before but does that mean Jirol was kind of like the initial god or at least the god from another time before this you know maybe he's not actually like you know the original god or something but who knows um but then for whatever reason we don't exactly know why i guess but he distributed his power or or else it was made to distribute his power either way throughout a bunch of new gods throughout the time tree. Were those gods et the Eternity Sword users that were that we see now? So, like, basically, the the core of all Eternity Swords was Jirol's power. 
And Nautakana actually is a part of Jarol's power now, and ironically, she's giving here giving him an aspect of her power, which was originally his power. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. But yeah, that's that's crazy. Either way, certainly not what I expected. A terrifying roar echoes over the battlefield. The antibodies swarm towards it. Nozomu is in the middle of them. And then... With a blinding explosion, part of the antibody army disappears. All of them come to a stop at the unexpected turn of events. They turn as one towards the fading glare where one man is standing. The man who was once Satoki Nozomu, but all of his humanity is now gone. He mutters in a low voice and looks down at his hands. He flexes his fingers, remembering the feeling of killing, and laughs. The antibodies around him open their mouths. The massacre begins. With nothing left to say, he raises his swords. The enemy is overwhelming, but he charges straight at them. Nobody can stop him. The antibodies prepare to stop him. Their front line has already been reduced to ash. A ghastly spectacle unfolds before them. Nozomi hugs her trembling body. Nemesis, her divided auriculum name, burns inside of her like an inferno. The man before her with such overwhelming power is unmistakably Jerol. He looks and sounds exactly like our precious childhood friend, but that only pains her more. Jerol swings with all of his strength, again and again and again. The enemies before him fall, slashed to little more than piles of debris. No mercy, no honor, no pride. He does not even acknowledge them, and simply uses his strength to destroy everything weaker than him. The antibodies fall with a mechanical whir that's almost like a scream. To him, the sounds of dying enemies are like a symphony spreading across the battlefield. The antibodies continue relentlessly advancing towards their unstoppable enemy. As one group uh, crumbles into rubble, another readies their weapons. Energy gathers in their turrets. Their turrets? Uh, turrets, I assume? And a ray of light arcs towards Jerol. He doesn't bother trying to protect himself. It pierces straight through him. But Jerol doesn't stop. He continues to crush everything before him, not caring if he is destroyed in the process. It's not arrogance. He's only obeying the unquenchable urge inside of him. What is a wound to the god of destruction? He exists solely to kill, and forever keep killing. His battlefield is everything that lies before him. Nozomu, 
望むが望むでなくなってまで戦うなんてそれでは誰も幸せにはならない Despite the earth heaving under their feet from the power racing through the area, the two try to run to him, but someone holds them back. He looks out with a grim expression. He knows of no way to stop Jerol's single minded slaughter. All he can do is bite his lip in frustration. It's clearly Nozomu swinging Aurora, but there's no trace of humanity left in him anymore. Only Narukana looks at him with long past memories in her eyes. Nobody else knows the majesty of the God of Destruction's power. The guardians of Izumo hurry to the brigade's side, but none are prepared for this battle. They all gasp in horror at their hideous spectacle. One sec. Okay, sorry about that. ジルオルが完全に覚醒したわ。望む君が体を開け渡したのよ。じゃあ、これってまさか片ストロフィーの再来私世界を破滅させる気神を全て滅ぼすまでジルオルは止まらないそして世界に絶やすくは言えない深い
遅い誰のことを言っているんだ<laughs> Jerol cannot escape her. He has fallen completely into her trap. Isbel sinks into his body to take over his soul. But in the next moment, he thrusts his arm out and grabs the air. He squeezes his fist, and a groan of pain comes from、uh, out from it. Um, Jerol's hand is bathed in light. He pushes it into Isbel, and like he's devouring her, begins to take her soul. Oh man, that's messed up. Didn't know Nozomu was Shang Tsung. Your soul is mine. Her desperate voice grows weak. The purple light flowing up Jerol's arm bursts and lances to a near antibody. Isabel escaped at the last moment by possessing an antibody again. <laughs> Gerald declares it with a single, unmistakable, murderous edge. Isabel activates the antibodies that are only partially destroyed. They gather in front of her to hold back Gerald while she flees. <laughs> All right, guys, and it doesn't look like this is going to end anytime soon, so I'm going to have to end it here. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.